today we're starting something a little bit different. We are moving to, at least for the next six weeks, a five-day-a-week short devotional podcast where every day we will have a short devotional and we are starting from the She Hears Bible Study. And this is not going to be the full context of the Bible study. In order to get that, you're going to have to buy it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of the devotional thoughts that are included in the Bible study. So not only will that be a glimpse of the study, and um, perhaps it'll be something that will entice you to dig a little bit deeper in the study. But what it's going to do is it's going to look at the women in the scriptures that we study in each of those weeks. And I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. I know sometimes you doubt if you are truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own. I know that you are praying for a way to know the difference and to be confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word. If you are ready to grow in your faith and your identity in Christ and to confidently step into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, before we get into today's episode, I have a quick word. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org. And for a limited time, I'm offering all of my podcast listeners a special discount of 20% off. You can use the discount code hearing Jesus. That's one word, all caps, to get your discount. There are also some free videos and a leader's guide for you to get started. Again, head to shehears.org and you can find the Bible study on the resources page. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Today we are starting our devotional series, a short devotional series with the She Hears Bible study. And the first week we are going to be covering Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and read the scripture that we're we're pulling the content from, and then we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we see and the way that God can kind of work through that message and reveal himself in in our daily lives. So I'm reading from the book of John, and um, I'm just going to read through. I want you just to listen. And this is talking about the wedding uh, feast that we see in the beginning of Jesus's public ministry. It says, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. When the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, but when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs, Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. So first things first. Um, we are studying our starting our study of Mary in a season that is really not her most famous work. In fact, um, this portion of scripture often gives Mary a bad rap. And as I first read through this, um, I will be honest, I used to think of Mary as like a meddling mom in this scenario. And 
I kind of applauded Jesus standing up to her. And that's how I read that. And what we're going to reveal this week is that's, in fact, not what was going on at all. And so I want to caution you against taking one or two verses or one passage of scripture and basing your impression of Mary's character on that filter because that that's dangerous. And I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but that's happened to me before where someone has formed an opinion of me based on one situation or one interaction, or sometimes it's even like one careless conversation. And that doesn't make us feel good when it happens to us. Yet we do that, not just with other people, but even with people in scripture. And so if there is, I want to do a heart check. If there's any unforgiveness or bitterness that you're holding on to from those kinds of situations, I want to encourage you to let that go. And if you need to pause this and take a minute to think through that, then go ahead and do that. But I want to make sure that we're starting with a clear heart. So now that we have that cleared out of the way, I want you to to always read through the lens of Jesus. And I say that because sometimes when we approach the scriptures, we forget two very important things. The first is that we have to consider each portion of scripture in light of all of the scriptures. And I talk about this in the book about this meta narrative of scripture, how the entire Bible is this one large storyline of who God is. And each of these individual books, as well as all the individual chapters in that book are part of a much larger story. And so all of scripture together teaches us about who God is and his rescue plan for us as his children. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that, like I said, we always have to read through the lens of Christ. And so if you single out a specific verse without reading it within the context of what we know about Jesus, then there's this danger of misunderstanding what Jesus says or who he is or what his intention is. And so how do we accomplish those things? Well, besides just being aware of them, first and foremost, it's important to look at the portion of scripture that you're studying in context. And what do I mean by that? I mean that well, some people might argue that the Holy Spirit can just reveal what he wants us to know without us doing any other study or f- looking at the other contextual details. But while that is true, sometimes, more often, it's not. More often, the Holy Spirit's already said and revealed what he wants us to know through his written word. And so it's our responsibility of reading that in a way that we can understand what he has already said. And sometimes people argue about that. They talk about uh, different versions of scripture and things like that. I want you to realize that no matter what version of the Bible that you're reading, if you're reading it in something other than Hebrew or Greek, you are reading it in translation. And so it's a translation of the original text. And so there is nothing wrong of looking at different translations to gain a better understanding. I do that all the time. Um, I think Bible, Bible Hub is the one that's really good. They have it all listed there, all the different versions for you. You can type in a verse and it'll kind of show you everything. Um, if you're using the King James Version, that's great. Keep using it. If you were using the NIV, that's great. Keep using it. But sometimes what we want to do is we want to look things up in other versions to kind of gain a little bit more perspective, a little bit more clarity. And then we also want to look at things through the lens of everything else that has said. And so the way that we do that, and um, I'm going to keep this short for today, but the way that we do that with Mary is I think it's important to think about who she was. As the mother of Jesus, she had a specific role in his life. In fact, Proverbs 1.8 says, Hear my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Very often in what we see is this role that mothers take as teacher in the lives of Jewish sons. And so um, here, even in the Old Testament, we see the mother is placed in this role of teacher from that Proverbs 1-8 verse. And so while we are in a place of understanding who Mary is, we have to recognize that at some point, Mary was an authority to Jesus. She had a role of authority in his life. Now he allowed that a hundred percent, but think about that for a moment. Mary was an authority to Jesus. She was his mother. She was his teacher. Does that hit you the way it hits me? Mary had authority because God gave her authority. It wasn't her choice necessarily. It wasn't something that she pursued. It was a calling that God gave her. And I don't know about you, but for me, That helps me understand a little bit more about my role as a mother and my role as a teacher within the church. That that relationship, that position of authority was something that God ordained. 
I also appreciate the fact that the very first human relationship that God had was in the form of a mother, a female, a woman, and Jesus, her son. That fact is not lost on me, and it should not be lost on you either, because nothing that Jesus does is without intention. Everything that he does is intentional. Everything that Jesus does is with intention. So that means, at least on some levels, Jesus himself was submitted to the authority of a woman and intentionally pursued a relationship with this woman that had authority with him. And so for women, especially those that feel called to lead within their homes or their churches or their jobs, we see this biblical precedence for this from the start of our knowledge of Jesus and his dynamic with women. And so Jesus, even as a child, we know that he had no sin. So we can deduct from that that he came under the authority of Mary as his mother a woman, willingly, without grumbling or complaining. And I wonder what that means for our brothers in Christ that have rejected the idea of women being authority, at least within some realms. So my goal is not to cause division or to stir up old wounds, but simply to allow for some new perspective as we study Mary this week, that if we don't allow women to lead in our churches, in our jobs, or even in our homes, um, at least in some realms, then it's a matter of personal preference not a matter of biblical precedence. And so I think that's important to point out, and uh, we'll get a little bit more into Mary's story tomorrow. Let's pray. God, thank you for revealing yourself through your word. Thank you for revealing the fact that you value women. In fact, you use them as an integral part of your plan for redemption and salvation through Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for Mary. We thank you for the example she sets, and we thank you for the role that she played in the life of Jesus. Lord, open our eyes and our hearts this week to learn more about her through your lens, God, not through ours. Lord, I pray for my friends today as they go throughout the day that you would help them to meditate upon your word and that you would reveal yourself clearly. In Jesus' name. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.